So for the last 11 years, Apple's made a whole bunch of shiny black rectangles. How does this shiny black rectangle do as a running watch? Whoa, my stock is way up! Welcome, I am the running otaku. Hello everybody, welcome back to Running Otaku. You're here with Running Otaku. How'd you figure that one out? Anyways, this week we are testing the Apple Watch Series 4. Finally got it uh, last week and have put it through the first set of tests. Um, for a full write-up of this review, you can go to runningotaku.com and see all the goodness and get all of the statistics and the data. You can download the files, all that good stuff. Anyways, uh, so what is uh, the Mount Tabor course? Uh, well, it is 2,000, uh, what is it, 2,610 meters or about 1.62 miles uh, through a park here in Portland. Uh, almost the entire way, is, is, the sky is obstructed with uh, pine trees. Uh, a lot of it is on single track and some of it is on uh, paved roads, but nonetheless, almost always the sky is covered. So it's a good test of how the watch performs uh, in kind of a, a forested environment. So how did it do? Well, I ran uh, 10 times uh, on the course, 10 laps. I didn't do more than four on any one day because I wanted to test the watch over a series of at least two or three days, which I did. Um, and as you can see here, these are the results of the 10 trials. Again, keep in mind that the total actual distance is 26.10. So for instance, you can see on lap one, it was 26.51 meters uh, for an error of 1.57%, and you can follow all the way through. The end result was that the average distance measured was 2,632, so 22 meters over the actual. And uh, the error was uh, about 0.08%, I believe. So the accuracy was 99.2%. How good is 99.2%? Well, uh, it's really good. Uh, I mean, if you're less than 1% on this kind of terrain, um, then uh, that's really, really good. Um, but this isn't just the story of accuracy. Precision is, is equally important, or maybe even more so. Uh, what is precision? Well, again, precision is measuring the spread of all those 10 trials, you know, where, where all the 10 trials really bunch together tightly or where they spread over a, a wide distance. And to answer that question, let's go to the second graph, as you can see here. There's four different devices. The three, the Stride, uh, the Apple Watch Series 3, and the Garmin 235, I tested several months ago, and I'm summarizing the results here. But let's focus on the Apple Watch 4 for just a second. So you can see the 10 results. They're represented by the 10 dots on its row. If the dot is green, that means it was uh, within 1% error. If it was yellow, then it was between 1% to 2%. Uh, and there's no red dots here, but you can see some in the Garmin, uh, and that means that there, there was more than 2% error. So the watch, as I said, had a 99.2% accuracy rating and a, a precision of 1.6%. So the way I got that was I took each of the errors of the 10 trials and computed the standard deviation, and then I multiplied that standard deviation by 1.96 to get a 95% confidence interval. Um, and when I did that, that's how I got the 1.96%. Um, so as you can see, it's slightly worse uh, than the Apple Watch Series 3 uh, performed, but it's actually statistically not significant. It's basically the same. So what does this mean? Well, if you already have an Apple Watch 3 and you want to upgrade primarily because you want better GPS accuracy in the trails, the Apple Watch 4 isn't going to do it. It's going to perform almost exactly the same. Um, I went to iFixit's uh, website where they do these amazing teardowns of all the all sorts of consumer electronic devices to see what was going on inside, if there was a difference between the Apple Watch Series 3 and the Apple Watch Series 4 GPS. Now, they both uh, apparently support the same satellite networks, which is GPS, which is America's satellite networks. Um, then there is GLONASS, which is uh, built by Russia. 
Um, there is Galileo, which is the EU network. And then there's QZSS, I believe, um, which is primarily focused on Japan. So at any rate, both watches support all four of those networks. Um, but as you can see here, there's actually a difference in the antenna, uh, assuming that I've uh, correctly identified the uh, antenna in each of these watches. Um, and what's interesting though, is that the antenna is actually kind of on this top part of the watch, maybe, <laughs> let me take it off. Actually here on the top part of the watch, um, which I guess would make sense if you're looking at it, you know, and you're like trying to find something nearby and you want to get um, an accurate GPS reading of where you are. But when you're running, you're running like this, which means that the antenna is right here, which means that it's pointing at the ground, which means that Apple did not necessarily design the uh, Apple Watch for specifically for runners. Um, now, of course, uh, I wouldn't expect anything else, but it is interesting to note that the uh, antenna is facing down during running, which could cause some of the imprecision that we see here. Um, so that's about it. I, like I said, overall, the Apple Watch 4 uh, did well in terms of accuracy. The precision is okay. Um, when it comes to running on trails, though, maybe you're like me. I don't actually care that much if it's exactly precise, because on the days I'm running on the trails, I'm getting in miles you know, on very terrain, and I'm not really strictly adhering to a specific distance um, or a specific pace. And anything within 2% in those uh, conditions is, is fine for me. So hopefully it is for you as well. Again, uh, in the coming days and weeks, I'll put the swatch through the paces. Yeah, see what I did there? Pretty good pun. Anyways, I'm going to test this watch uh, on um, different terrain. So the spring water corridor, which is that open bike path, you know, which is what I use for temple running. And I want to see how this watch does and, you know, for temple runs. And then on the Otaku circuit, uh, which has everything thrown at it, uh, we'll see how it does. Anyways, that's it for now. If you like what you saw, hit the like button. And please, 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 please uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, you can do that on YouTube. And right after you hit the subscribe button, hit that little icon for the post notifications. So each and every time I come up with a new video, like the next test for the Apple Watch 4, you'll be notified right away and can be one of the first to view it. Because that's got to mean something to somebody. It does to me. Anyways, that's it again for this week. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.